motor video. That's a sound you might not have heard in a while, a VCR motor running. And that's right, today we're going to talk a little bit about VCRs. Why? Well, eight years ago we did a little video on VCRs highlighting the differences over the decades. That short video is one of the most popular videos on our YouTube channel and still pretty high on a Google video search ranking for the word VCR. Since there's still some interest and we have a 4K camera now eight years later, we thought it might be time to do a follow-up video. We can revisit the original topic and ask the question, are VCRs even worth keeping around in 2020? Um, they're pretty old and I'd rather use a DVD. We'll talk about that and they're probably, I guess in my opinion, there's Why some... Why are two of the same? Ah, we'll get to that too. While I still own all these VCRs eight years later, I'm sad to say the 1980s VCRs have not fared as well as the others. I tried to sell them at several garage sales, but no one was interested. So they were taking up a bunch of space, I just stuck them in this outdoor storage shed. Gross! The remote has a cord on it! I doubt they would even work after sitting out there with all the lawnmowers. We'll find out in a little bit. What do well, you think? Well, the lawnmowers still work. Yeah. As some commenters on the original video have correctly pointed out, this top-loading mechanical manual design was really more of a product of the late 70s than the 80s. However, these two specific VCRs were purchased and used by my family during the 1980s. The one on the left, the 1210, was purchased in 1981. It was my family's first VCR. The one on the right was my uncle's. You may notice the crack in the lid on the right. That is from my uncle beating on the thing, trying to make it work before wisely passing it on to his nephew who fixed it. If you owned a Panasonic VCR at any point in time, you may remember the name Omnivision. Back in the late 70s, they made VCRs for RCA who marketed that same VCR under the name Selectivision. But this VCR was everywhere. All these VCRs in this article look suspiciously like the PV1200. I think they're all just reselling the same thing. This style of top-loading VCR was very quickly replaced with front loaders, and by the mid-1980s, I remember feeling like our family's VCR was, was quickly behind the times compared with everybody else's. These two Panasonic models were both available at the Memphis Target at the exact same time. We only happened to get the 1210 because the 1200 was out of stock. This printout looks like it's from the internal Target computer system, and the sales guy probably gave it to us because we were asking too many technical questions. At the end of the last video, I showed how similar these two Panasonic models were by sort of superimposing them on top of each other. It's very apparent when you look at them, you can see cutouts in the newer model in the case for the clock and the tracking section and how some things had changed. But what happened with the Panasonic is essentially things got a lot more streamlined and simple with the 1210 model. Camera tuner switch was dropped. Audio dub was dropped. The clock was moved up front. A large record button was added and the requirement to press play and record was dropped. On the 1210, the timer just stops at the end of the tape, whereas on the 1200, you can program a start and a stop. In short, the 1210 model was more oriented towards a TV-only consumer rather than someone who might be using the VCR with an external video camera. But one of the most interesting changes between these two VCR models is cultural. This switch serves the same purpose on both models, but in the older one, it's called VTR, not VCR. VTR is video tape recorder. VCR, of course, is the term that stuck and is more correct because the tape itself is enclosed inside a cassette. But this took a while to take hold. Maybe he records it somehow. Right, Dennis Farina? VTRs. 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 And although it's kind of hard to hear, tracking down a picture of the 1979 album with the Bugles hit Video Killed the Radio Star clearly shows in the lyrics they were saying, put the blame on VTR. But if you just Google the lyrics today, or fast forward 25 years to this 2004 live performance, it's very clear he's changed the lyric to put the blame on VCR. So I'll put a link to these videos in the description so you can judge for yourself. Oh, by the way, the purpose of that switch, it was very important since it controlled whether or not the VCR sent its own signal or the antenna signal to the TV. This confused a lot of people apparently back in the day. You're saying I can record something I'm not even watching? Yes, that's the point. You don't even need a TV to record. How would I see it? Well, to see it, you need a TV. But shut up. Just shut up. He doesn't get it. In the original video, we also jumped forward a couple of decades and showed these two VCRs, a Mitsubishi from 1994 and a Sony from 2001. The Mitsubishi is a higher-end machine. It has dual outputs, editing features, and VCR Plus with cable box control. The Sony is more basic, but still a very nice machine, and being newer has less wear and tear on the heads. For this video, I'm going to replace the Sony with the Magnavox VCR to look inside and show how... The older VCRs had discrete components, but this has sort of all-in-one boards, and that kind of illustrates the problem with these modern VCRs. Inside the Mitsubishi, I've at least got boards and wires I can work on it, but let's look inside this Magnavox. The entire tape transport mechanism just plugs into one main board. So you take off the front panel, and the whole thing just plugs in. 
So there's the transport mechanism. The transport mechanism plugs in with these edge connectors and below is just one big board. There's a tuner board over on the left, but even the sensors and LEDs that go up inside the mechanism are just down there on the board. And it looks like with that cutout, it looks like you could access the belts while it's running, but you really can't. You can't get to the bottom cover. The whole thing is just cheap. So back to the original question posed at the beginning of the video, are old VCRs worth repairing? My answer is probably not in most cases. While vintage audio equipment can still sound really good, what do you do with the VCR? The picture will never look as good as an HD picture or even DVD picture. There's really no point in looking at a mainstream commercial movie on a VHS tape when it's available on a better format. In my opinion, the reason to keep a VCR around is to recover family videos or old commercials or stuff that just doesn't exist in a newer format. My advice is if you want to own a VHS VCR, don't even bother looking at it unless it has low mileage heads and hi-fi stereo sound. So I'll keep my Sony around for use with a video capture card for transferring interesting promo tapes and home movies. What's funny is looking at these stacks of old videotapes, the commercials and promos are the more interesting content now for nostalgia than the original movie content, which we'll show you a little bit of that in a moment. Despite all that advice I just gave you, I know what y'all want to see. Do the old VCRs I left in a dusty shed for years and years still work? Well, I hooked up the PV1210 and here's what happened. Right, so let's try this thing out. Let's hook up some power. Hope it doesn't explode. Ooh, we got power. We got a signal, the TV went blank. We got a light. Let's try a tape. Well, that's not good. Hang on. Maybe our little flip, flipper is he did it just there we go. Well we got we got something. Let me try the old isopropyl alcohol on the heads, see what happens. Hey, I'm John with Clay. Hog lot, how do you limo drive? It seems like with a little TLC, this thing could work. Now, since we've been discussing VCRs in relation to songs and movies, before we go, I'd like to show you my pick for the most unbelievable VCR movie moment ever. Pretty violent for a VCR <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we're going to wrap this video up with two vintage commercial clips. One is from the late 80s, recorded on the Panasonic VCR. It's a uh, local commercial for a gun shop, probably recorded at the slow speed with noisy linear audio. The second, actually, I know, was recorded on August 1998 because the Mitsubishi VCR date time stamps the recordings. It has hi-fi stereo sound, and it's for a couple of Fox forgotten shows, including one about rollerblading cops. Anyway, enjoy this. I'll put some more, maybe, links in the description to other captures. That about wraps it up. See you next time for another awesome video. At Going Western Gun Shop, Navy Road, Millington, you're right on target with the Mid-South's largest selection of long guns, handguns, scopes, and reloading equipment. And right now, catch the special going on at Going Western on gun safes by American Security Safes. Eight long gun with five shell safes as low as $577 delivered to your door. Protect your guns and other valuables with a safe from Going Western Gun Shop, Navy Road, Millington. At Going Western Gun Shop, you're right on target. Great guns! The future of law enforcement. Where you guys supposed to be, man? Has arrived. Blade Squad. A world premiere movie. Blade Squad. Tomorrow at 8, 7 central on Fox. A brand new Getting Personal. Part of a full hour Friday on Fox.